Hello, welcome back again. I have three poems today. I don't want to say too much about the content of the poems because if, as John Green says about novels, uh, books belong to their readers, this is doubly true for poetry. A poem's relationship to a reader is much more an individual thing and will depend on connections that rely a lot on individual circumstances and the life experiences of the reader or listener. This first poem comes from Robert Penn Warren. It was suggested to me by Michael Morgan. Suffice to say it was written with attention to and with Audubon in mind and that's the naturalist got to German freeway. And that's probably saying too much already. I hope you find something in the poem. I certainly do. Tell Me a Story by Robert Penn Warren. Long ago in Kentucky, I, a boy, stood by a dirt road, in first dark, and heard the great geese hoot northward. I could not see them, there being no moon and the stars sparse. I heard them. I did not know what was happening in my heart. It was the season before the elderberry blooms, therefore they were going north. The sound was passing northward. Tell me a story. In this century and moment of mania, tell me a story. Make it a story of great distances and starlight. The name of the story will be time, but you must not pronounce its name. Tell me a story of deep delight. That was Tell Me a Story by Robert Penn Warren. This next poem I wrote myself uh, many years ago, long before I was a father, but I think it says as much to me today about how I feel about parenting and especially some of the most difficult and painful parts of being a parent. Um, that I don't know how I could have understood this at the time, and I'm not sure that that's what I had in mind at the time, because I, reading this poem today, am a very different person than I was when I wrote it many years ago. And I hope you will like it. This is called Watch This. A river flows through northern Canada. Few men have seen it. Fewer still have set foot in the icy stream. Almost to none have tasted the waters. There, through the trees, a man descends the high banks, carrying a child in his arms, a small girl. Carefully, he steps into the water, cold streaming around his legs. He wades out as far as he dares, where, with a sudden movement, without a sound, he places the girl on the glistening surface, holds her there a moment, releases her. In an instant, she is swallowed below the surface. Far downstream, around the bend and out of sight, she bursts through the surface. Laughing, the sun is in her eyes. And finally we come full circle, wrapping up with another poem that involves geese. Watch this, too. Everyone watches the flock of geese headed south overhead. The real wonder is in the eyes of the twins, four years old this fall. And I like this poem um, without, again, delving too much into literary analysis, but one thing I like about this poem is it's, it was trying to be intentionally ambiguous when talking about the eyes of the twins. I want the, the reader to contemplate and, and think about, perhaps, whether we mean that while we're all impressed by a flock of geese, that the real amazement comes from people seeing it for the first time in their lives, perhaps. But also, is it more of a miracle when we look at that flock of geese flying already, or is the miracle in seeing the, the look in, in young children, especially twins who have grown up with someone matching them in an unusual way, seeing a whole flock of beings that all match one another, and what they might be thinking of that, and that sense of discovery and wonder. You can take it either way, you can take it both ways, that's what I liked about this short, simple little poem, because I, I enjoy that kind of ambiguity in language. I wonder often if anyone else recognizes or has ever considered when I sign off my videos and say, I will talk to you again soon, hopefully, whether everyone assumes I'm talking about the fact that I, I have a desire for my equipment not to fail and for life not to become too overwhelming with other demands so that I can get the video up, or if they understand that I am also saying that when I speak to you, it will, if I have my way, it will be hopefully, it will be full of hope and optimism and belief in the future, uh, uh, because that's what 
I want to, that's the person I want to be, that's the message I want to deliver. Always. Um, because I believe life gets better and I think we should keep that in mind and keep it in our view as a way of arming us against despair and cynicism. Because I really hate cynicism. I hope you like them. Till next time, don't forget to be awesome. And I will talk to you again soon, hopefully.